you are here. Where are we going? Oh. Omichi, Omicho. Omicho. Oh, it's a cute name. I like it. Oh, he's got me. Whoa. That's an awesome name. That is an awesome entrance. Welcome everyone back to the channel and welcome to day two of our trip to Japan in April 2018. Awesome. We're here in Kanazawa just for a couple of hours this morning. Then we're getting on a train to go over to Matsumoto, but we've come this morning to Omicho Market. Uh, it's actually raining outside quite a lot. We're very lucky because Omicho is underground. Um, underground? Undercover. Undercover. It's undercover, not underground. Um, I think it's largely a fruit and veg market, I think. We're going to go around and have a quick look for an hour or two. And then we're going to go over to the station, Kanazawa Station, which is now one of my favourite stations in the whole world, and get on the train. Anyway, come along with us. It's going to be fun. And hopefully, it's also going to be norm. They have wasabi. That's what it looks like. It looks like ginger, doesn't it? Yeah. Amazing. <gasps> this stuff I absolutely love. Wallabi mochi. Wallabi mochi, that's what it's called. And usually put sort of like a, a dark sugar syrup on it. It's so good. I have seen a lot of fugu here in uh, Kanazawa. Seems to be a fugu town. Or at least a place where you can get fugu. I'm pretty scared about fugu. Only because of that Simpsons episode. That's it. I probably shouldn't base all of reality off of Simpsons, but never mind. Fruit in Japan is so expensive, but it's also the most delicious fruit I have ever tried in my whole entire life. It's massive and extremely juicy. It's amazing. There's uni there, which is sea urchin. I'm a bit hit and miss with uni. I like it with soy sauce. If you ever have it, the best thing to eat it with is soy sauce. By itself, it's a very odd flavor. Now, scallops, that's what I could go for. They look awesome. I think this is one of the famous croquet places, or if not the famous croquet place. Uh, it's a croquet of foods that are covered in panko bread crumbs. Uh, they're really really good. I think they have a pumpkin one here. Vegetarians, you may be able to have it. It may be made uh, with chicken powder on the outside. I don't know. Vegans, definitely not. I know they use an egg wash in this. So it's not for you. Um, but that's the pumpkin one there. Uh, if you want tips on how to ask if something contains meat, let me know. I'm very very happy to tell you. Um, I'll put a note down, down in the description so that you uh, can see exactly what to say. Also, people who are a little bit more adventurous, fried oysters, khaki fry, are really, really popular here in Japan. And um, uh, yeah, you can get them here as well. They're delicious, uh, but slightly different to what we used to having, or how we used to oysters being served. This grilled fish looks unbelievable. Check that out. 250 yen. Oh my God. I might buy four of them. And this is eel. The eel looks amazing. <gasps> 4,000 yen for one eel. Must be good eel. That's a 6,000 yen crab. No, it's 8,500. Oh, that must be a tasty crab. Oh, that was 9,000. 9,000 yen crab. That's a really expensive crab. Looks like we're getting into the fish market section. I haven't seen this much fish since Skiji. It's crazy. Um, there's loads of shellfishy things over here. I don't know, there's crabs and stuff. Um, and languistine. I'm going to pretend I know about what things are called. Uh, and also sea snails. What were you going to say, Liam? It's part of tuna. Oh, inside of tuna. It's huge, isn't it? They are ginormous. They are absolutely... Scary creature down here. That is a really scary creature. Oh my gosh. What the hell is that? I don't even want to think about it. The sea is a mysterious place full of delicious things. This is amazing. You can buy your clothes here as well. <gasps> it's a proper market. You can get everything. Umbrellas, clothes, fish, and expensive crabs. These types of onions in the center of the screen. Or radish. It's a radish, isn't it? They always remind me of Super Mario Brothers too, right? Him carrying it around. Liam, you found an alcohol store. Good job. Good job, Liam. Let's go in, because I want to see if they've got any beer here. I bet they don't, but let's have a look anyway. Oh, oh wow. Those are the ones. Yeah, there. Also, they, you could just buy the dark one. We could drink that on the train. Yeah. Good day. Like being like old man on the train drinking. Old woman on the train drinking. I love the giant sake bottles. They look amazing. Look at this. I just don't know what any of them are. A friend of mine's sake expert. Japanese. Um, she knows all the good stuff. But they're just so beautiful. To be honest, if I was buying any here, I'd probably just pick one that was a decent price and just hope that it was good. <laughs> or choose one that had some really cool art on the cover. Wow, that's amazing. They are actually cutting iron. 
Here we go. Wow. We are at the station again. Um, this lovely guy is sorting us out with some tickets to Matsumoto. Um, he printed out this little thing actually which tells us exactly when our train's leaving here um, arriving at Nagano and then getting a train to Matsumoto interestingly Google actually told us to get a local train um, but this is a fast one so we're gonna get that one instead Okay. Uh, thank you. Yay! Uh, we're going to pick up some food uh, for the journey popping into the convenience store and then also to get Probably some eki bands, some eki bento, a uh, station bento, and also some onigiri as well. This is Liam Lloyd's onigiri, and it's actually a very good thing for vegetarians because you can usually find some pretty decent vegetarian onigiri. This is amazing. We've come to this rice ball place, onigiri place. Sometimes they're called omasubi places, by the way. If you're looking for them in Japan, they're going to be called onigiri places or omasubi places. You see here, this. anybody can read katakana, it's musubi. Um, it's just another word that they use for, for onigiri. This is amazing. Look at this. I don't know if you can see, but they've got absolutely loads of them. And every single one is marked in English. And whether they are vegetarian or not vegetarian, that's unbelievable. So look, pork, rice with pickled mustard leaves, non-vegetarian for whatever reason. Um, and over there, the one that Liam is just grabbing, that is, almost, uh, that is um, umeboshi. So pickled plum inside of a rice ball. It's uh, completely vegetarian. It's marked so as well. It's awesome. I'm so impressed, really. I just, I've never seen this in any... Um, in any rice ball place in the whole of Japan, I've never seen this. It's great. Oh yes, to the Shinkansen entrance. Shinkansen often has its own entrance in um, in Japanese train stations. So you want to look out for it. It'll usually be the blue one. It's blue means speed, obviously. and we get there at 12.22. Oh my gosh, yeah. No, that's 86 minutes, it says, so an hour and a half. And then we've only got 51 minutes on the next train. All right, better get eating. We've only got 86 minutes to get through our onigiri. We're trying these now. I love these macadamia nut things. They usually come with normal chocolate over them. They are normal milk chocolate. Now they've got green tea, white chocolate. They're revealed. There they are. Ha ha ha. The wolf thought they could thwart me. Look at that. Amazing, huh? I think this is like the Karobe Dam area mountains. Karobe Mountains. Karobe. Karobe. It's very pretty. Forget how much I like the station as well. All of these big stations are really nice on this line. Here, yeah, Midori. Oh, I remember this place. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, Mariyama. Where? Oh yeah, that's it up there. Cool. Yeah, Mariyama coffee. I'm excited. Yeah, it's a beautiful station. I really like it. Ooh. We liked Nagano when we were there, didn't we? We did like Nagano. 
Uh, we have visited Nagano before. Uh, we stayed here for a few nights when we were visiting the um, Jigo Kudani Monkey Park. It's where the uh, it's where the monkey onsen is, where they have the um, snow monkeys and they bathe in the onsen throughout the year. We actually went in summer, not in winter. It was amazing. It was so good. I wasn't vlogging at that time. Sorry. I hope to do that journey at some other point in the future, which will be good. Um, but yeah, anyway, Nagano is a cool place. This is what the coffee place looks like. Lady just asked me for my order and wrote it down on this bit of paper here. I think I'm gonna take it up there to pay. And I think she shouted my order over. They got a pretty intense coffee machine over there. I think this is gonna be pretty good. Yes, Sam. Um... Oh yeah, look at that, nice and acidic. Oh, lovely. It's really hot. Oh yeah, that's really good. It's really nice, you know. This is actually quite acidic. You might like this. Funky music in there. Did you like it though? It's alright. Too hot though. We are back inside the station and we are now waiting for our train just inside. It's a little bit nippy on the platform, so uh, we're hanging out downstairs. This train that we're getting is a limited express train on the Shinano line, which is going to Matsumoto. The limited express trains will almost always require you to have a special ticket uh, to ride on them. Uh, it's kind of weird because they call themselves limited express and not express trains. When I first came to Japan, I always thought an express train was like the fastest version and then the limited express was the next fastest version i don't ever think they have actual express express trains right? i've never seen an express train Liam's shaking his head anyway if you see a limited express train or a train is is labeled as limited express you're going to need a ticket to ride on it if you are or if you have sorry if you have a jr pass you can get your limited express tickets for free or as part of the price of the jr as, as the jr pass so you can just go and uh, to a regular ticket booth uh, speak to one of the people there and just get a limited express ticket for, for free uh, but you must have one to get onto the limited express trains so don't just try to get on it so that's our train it's the li limited express you know uh, or on the limited express that's going on the Shinano line and its final stop is Nagoya but we are getting off way before that it's leaving at one o'clock wow this is our train this is amazing it's already here I'm not too sure if we can get on it I think Liam's gone to find our thing this way yeah okay cool it looks a little bit like an American train how weird it's a tiny little soba shop on the platform it's amazing people are getting sober to bring onto the train and uh, eat it uh, it's about lunchtime so it's probably a really good thing to do oh, look at that cool train over there wow it's retro love all these old trains are amazing oh my gosh that's cute well, for ages and I want to use the internet <laughs> Chuo lines. So this is Matsumoto Station, a lot smaller than Kanazawa. I would have thought it would have been bigger. Um, but this is it. I suppose it is a pretty small town. Cute in there. It's also got a Midori department store. Seems like all of the big stations in Nagano might, may have one. Or is it a Nagano department store? People from Nagano, please tell me. Uh, where does Midori originate as a department store? I know it's a colour. It means green for everybody who doesn't know. <laughs> Anyway, we are going this way. We are staying at another Hotel Dormi Inn. And yeah, I can see it too. <laughs> We're staying at another Hotel Dormi Inn. We're staying at the Hotel Dormi Inn in Matsumoto. It's my favorite hotel chain, so let's go. Ta-da! So yeah, so we're in Dormi Inn in, uh, in Matsumoto. I will show you around. 
our room it looks exactly like the room in Kanazawa if you watch the vlog when we were when we <laughs> entered into the room in our hotel in Kanazawa uh, this is the same hotel chain dormy in which I absolutely love mostly because they always have an onsen a bathhouse on the top floor of their hotel uh, the room looks incredibly similar incredibly similar so just quickly because we have to get going soon this is our room we got big bed which is nice it's actually pretty sizable sometimes these double beds aren't really double beds um, lavatory uh, shower that we never use uh, because we always use the onsen so we never use the shower but it is here it is pretty decent we also have a little washlet area which i have already destroyed a uh, tiny little space for um actually it's not it's pretty decent space for hanging up just clothes more, than we, had more than we had in the last place that's true and that is our desk area right we gotta get moving so um yeah i guess i'll see you guys in a bit it's a bit windy we found the river here. Beautiful Matsumoto town, we just took a walk through. Uh, they have rather wide streets, but it's pretty quiet. Uh, beautiful clock on the top left, and if you can see it. Cherry blossoms everywhere, it's lovely. Look at the giant toad god. Oh my god, that's an amazing statue. Oh, I want one. It's weird though, you don't, we don't have a view of it yet. We haven't had a view really at all. <laughs> Give it a second. Oh, actually I can see it. I can see it over there, woohoo. So, just here to the right hand side, there seems to be people giving uh, tour free tours in English if you're interested. Liam and I tend to do touring at our own pace, so um, we're not going to do a, um, a tour guide today. But if you guys prefer to have a tour guide in English, they are available. And just go over there as you come into the entrance if you're approaching from Matsumoto Town. I am going to take a photo from here because it looks pretty amazing, the view right now. I'll turn you around so you can have a look. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Isn't that amazing? And that's Moto Castle. This is one of the biggest and best castles in Japan. And for whatever reason, I've just never, ever been here. It's phenomenal to finally see it. All right, let's get some of those Instagram shots and then let's have a look around. There we go. Look at that. That's amazing. I think we go in round to the right and then we might be able to get up there. I think I can see some people walking along the top floors so that you can probably go all the way in. That's amazing. I don't think I've seen a castle in that colouring. I like it. There you go. Let's get a better close up. Oh my god, it's so cool. Right, let's go in and take a look around. Um, the small northern tower especially is in danger of collapsing in case of a major earthquake. It's been closed to us since July 15, 2017. Be sure to follow the staff's e evacuation instructions should an earthquake occur. Scary. <laughs> Yeah, there we go, 610 yen um, uh, per uh, adult and 300 per kid. So we're trying to work out how many times this castle has fallen, if it's fallen at all. It's very, very common for castles in Japan to have fallen due to earthquakes, they got burnt down. Sadly, one was bombed. Was Hiroshima Castle the only castle that was bombed? I can't remember. Uh, well, was. one for definite. And uh, generally, they, they've, they've fallen down and had to be restored. Uh, some of them just wear in general wear and tear. I mean, these buildings are largely built out of wood and they've had to survive hundreds and hundreds of years. At the moment, it seems like, from what we've read, Matsumoto Castle has largely been standing for an incredibly long time. Um, at 300, 400 years or something like that. The original castle was built in 1593 um, it is incredibly well fortified because during that time it was a feudal time there was lots and lots of battles going on at that time so it's very very well fortified bits of it were added afterwards and um, there's a moon viewing spot and other such things those buildings aren't as well fortified naturally uh, because uh, there was peace had come and so peace had arrived peace had come and uh, so there wasn't so much need to fortify those particular buildings um, yeah it's quite unique because it's a Hirojiro I think I've got that right a hero duo which is a castle which is built on a plane rather than built on a mountain or a hill it's amazing it's a bit backlit at the moment not too sure if you can see I might get another view around the other side i love it it's imposing glare it's so dark it's amazing you said it has a mascot oh my god he's cute oh i love it why is it so pretty oh That is an amazing picture. Take it, take it now. <laughs> that is a kick-ass photo. Good job, guy. This is a nice entrance here. So this is the entrance into the castle. Sort of have this other keep here. I think this might be the bit that we're not allowed into. I think we'd probably go in there and head straight left. 
um, and it, I, I, I will be amazed if you're able to take shoes in here. Okay, no, you're not. You have to take your shoes off. So guys, just remember if you're coming, shoes are going to have to come off at one point. So make sure you give your feet a nice good wash <laughs> the night before, right? <laughs> Adios, I ask. Oh God, my God, guys, these are really steep steps to get in here. I'm not entirely too sure how accessible this is. Yeah, you might need to watch that if you come in. What have you found? Are we shooting people through here? With arching, ar oh, actually the view's pretty good, can you guys see? Good archer might be able to do some real damage from here. One hand is holding the sides, oh, because they are steep stairs. I read in Japan Guide that the stairs are really steep, and they really are. <laughs> they say this passage, or this floor, is called a Musha Bashiri. It's, um, it's a wide floor, <coughs> which allows samurai to run through it in full armor. It's a passage or the floor? This passage. I guess that makes sense. So samurai could run through this in full armor. It's the fire and bow archery. I right? thought it was a fire and bow this archery. Is because it's a square hole. This is a How hole. do you know that? It says it over there. Oh, okay. I thought you were really intelligent, and it turns out you just read a plaque. As Liam said, these long ones are for archery. Archery? That's not a word, is it? This one is for uh, stone throwing. No, this one is for Musket. muskets. And that one is for stone throwing. <laughs> there you go. You can sort of see that would make a lot more sense. As people are climbing up the walls, you just chuck a boulder at them. Why not, eh? Are you trying to get into my castle? I will chuck a boulder at you. Uh, look at that out there. That's pretty cool. Oh, I can see a lady in, in, a, in a kimono with the cherry blossoms. So the castle has undergone some restorations, so it does not need it to be fully rebuilt, but it's gone through some restorations. It makes sense. It's made out of wood, of course, it would need to be restored at some point. Apparently, the one um, in the show, the restoration in the Showa period was between 1950 to 55. Here's an example of one of the stone pillars they took out at that time. Here you go, more super steep stairs. Let's go. Oh my gosh. I don't know why I'm showing you guys this. There's nothing to see until we get up. <laughs> It's a nice embarrassment of how long it's taken me to get up these stairs. Ooh, 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 second floor. Oh, some baskets. The castle is actually largely designed to protect us against firearms. The walls are 20 to 30 centimeters thick, specifically to protect against firearm fire. Firearm fire. Gunfire. That makes sense. Samurai outfit. I'm always surprised at how small they are. He doesn't look very happy to be wearing it on the right hand side. Um, yeah, they are phenomenal though. Wonder how much they protected against uh, gunfire. The staircases seem to be steep by design, <laughs> which makes sense really. It's good so that your enemy has to work hard to get to to get up them. They're also separated. Stairs don't lead from one into the other, um, which is probably another thing by design to make sure again that your enemy can't race up to whatever's on the top floor. Okay, so here Liam's going to go up the 41 degree stairs. Um, now he Liam's about 180 centimeters tall, um, so he's making light work of it but other people aren't having the best time <laughs> all right it's my turn and it's no photography allowed on the stairs i've got to put you away uh, which makes sense um, because otherwise likely to fall right i'm up i think i've climbed easier mountains to be honest <laughs> so you can see these aisles are pretty narrow the ones downstairs were quite wide uh, for samurai i don't think samurai get up here in their full armor but on we go as we are going to go right to the top we are the lords of t this castle today Ooh. That is a nice picture. Wow, look at that. Look at that beautiful red bridge, my gosh. That's amazing. This is a lovely place. We made it to the top floor. Yes, it's 202, it's 22.1 meters above the ground. And um, yeah, it's got a view out of all four areas. It's a bit windy here. Every single window is open, or southeast, west, which is pretty cool. Uh, this guy just explained to us about how it was uh, 400 years old, this castle, and they're hoping to get to 500 in 2094. <laughs> so in 2094, they'll have their fifth, five, 500th year celebration, which is amazing. Apparently, a goddess is enshrined in the castle roof with 500 kilograms of rice and because that rice was deified and the castle has survived to 
through this day. That is the entrance that we came from, round to the right hand side. We walk past there and straight up towards the castle. I think this is my favourite view, the one with the red bridge, it's beautiful. You can see a little bit of the moat down to this way. Oh sorry, I must scrape you on the wall. Um, you can see a little bit of moat down in this way, but out here you get a good view of those fish, those shachi. It's often that you'll find shachi fish decorating a castle. Uh, shachi fish have the face of a, a tiger and the body of a fish, and they're supposed to ward off the castle from fire, I think. So they're protecting the castle from fire. It's a, a water god that protects the castle. They're usually replaced during restorations, and then the ones from the previous, um, sort of the previous era, uh, then end up in museums and such. I absolutely love them, I think they're cool. <laughs> I think they're really kick ass. That was great. I loved it. Pretty good for 310 yen each, don't you think, Simon? 610 yen. 610 yen each. Uh, yeah, Matsumoto Castle, brilliant. I'm glad we came all the way here. Tomorrow we are going to Kiso Valley, uh, so we're using this as a base to get over there as well. We're actually gonna go now, probably look around the town a little bit, I guess. Maybe pop into a few shops. Um, if you come along with us, great. I don't know if there's going to be anything interesting. If not, I will say goodbye now. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. There might be footage after this, there might not be. <laughs> anyway, thanks again, guys. For now, I'll say goodbye. I'll see you in a bit. If not, in the next vlog. Okay, bye. <laughs>